Hey everybody, Joe Baker here with the Edit Bay. Tonight, we're going to take a look at using a 3D particle generator to add fog to our aerial footage. Visual effects may not be the first tool that pops into your head when you're thinking about setting the tone or the mood of your film. We tend to associate visual effects with creating what only exists in our imagination, such as futuristic cities or superhuman powers. Sometimes your scene calls for a location that may not be easy to find, but with a little creativity and post-production know-how, you can take a location that's about 60% there and fake the rest. So let's take a look at what we're going to be making here tonight. We have a grim looking scene with some nighttime color grade and some fog over this water here. And as far as visual effects go, this is actually a pretty easy effect to pull off. Let's get started. So we're going to be using a 3D particle generator. And since it's a 3D effect, we'll need to run a 3D camera track on our footage to make sure that our particles fit into our scene. So we'll just need to select our background plate, right click and select track camera. This banner here looks slanted because I did a rotation adjustment on my background plate to line up my horizon. So this analysis is going to run in the background, which frees us up to create a new solid by hitting Control Y. And we'll call this Mist. Click OK. And then we'll go up to Effect, Trap Code, Particular. And nothing happens because the playhead is over here at the beginning of my comp. So if we just scrub forward just a little bit, we'll be able to see the particles coming out of the middle right here. After Effects ships with some particle generators that work pretty well in certain situations. Unfortunately, creating mist isn't one of them. So we're gonna have to break out the big guns. Trap Code Particular, by the way, is a industry standard particle generator that you can get at redgiant.com. All right, once your track is complete, we'll just have to come over here and click on Create Camera. Now, any 3D element that we add to our scene will fit or stick in 3D space. It's important to mention that we just completed the main concept of what we're working with tonight. Our particles now exist in 3D space, so they'll move with the camera, and we're free to use this particle generator however we see fit at this point. So our first order of business is to mess with the settings of our particle generator here to get it to behave like fog. We're not going to worry too much about making it look like fog just yet, but we do want it to behave like fog. So we're going to come over here to the emitter, and we're going to change the emitter type to a box. And we're going to take the emitter size X and we're going to spread this out. Now, by the way, if you hold down the shift key and move that out, you can really stretch that out. Stretch it up Y just a little bit and then Z a lot. It kind of looks like the, the far end of the emitter is going down and the uh, front end of the emitter is coming towards us. We need to rotate this. We need to set the X rotation. Yeah, about 13 should do it. Let's try that. Okay, so you can see now it does kind of look like those particles are on the surface of the water, which is what we want. So the nature of particle generators is they kind of work like this. Particles are born and they die. And you control how long their life is. You can control how much they move, how many particles are born and how many die. and what their opacity level is when they're born, what their opacity level is when they die. Um, this is not what we want. Obviously this looks more like bugs than anything else because they're being born, they're dying, and they're only lasting a couple of seconds here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to our velocity. I'm gonna zero these out. That way things are not moving around too much. So now our particles are basically staying still. They look like they're bugs floating on the water. That's a little bit closer to what we want, but you can see that some of them are blinking into existence and then just blinking out of existence. So we need to fix that. Uh, let's increase the particles per second. So we've got a higher number of particles to work with here. At least we know what we're looking at now. Now let's go down to our particle settings. Actually, you know what? Let's go to emission extras first. And we're gonna set our pre-run Let's go up to 100. What this is gonna do is because particles are born and die, what the pre-run does is if, if you crank it all the way up to 100, it'll say, okay, these particles are gonna exist at the beginning of your comp. Instead of them all of a sudden just appearing, they're just gonna be here all the time. Okay, that's closer to what we want. Now let's go to our particle settings. We're gonna set the life to, I don't know, 30, 35, somewhere around in there. Now that'll not only increase the number of particles that we have, but this will ensure that we're not going to have any of them just disappearing randomly. Because again, if they die during the comp, 
it's going to appear that they're disappearing. And once we make these things a lot bigger so that they look like little puffs of cloud or fog, it'll look like sections of your fog are simply disappearing. We don't want that. So we'll raise that life. Um, we're going to change the particle type to a cloudlet. Size we're going to leave alone for the time being. I am noticing that this is getting kind of cut off over here. And this is an emitter problem. This isn't a particle problem. So we're going to go back up to the emitter, the emitter size X. We're going to stretch this out a little further. That way that's covering more of our scene. Yeah, maybe a little more. Okay, back down to our particles. Now size, in order to get this to look like a cloud, we're going to crank up our size. I know this looks kind of crazy. It's going to look like a big white blur. But what we want to do is we want to get this to start to take the shape, at least in the background. See how this is kind of a cloudy type shape. Even though it looks like a solid blob down here, what we can do is reduce our opacity big time. So that's at four. Let's cut that in half and see what we'll see what happens. That's two. Let's cut that in half. See how it looks. One's getting us a little bit closer to what we're, where we want to be. Something else to think about too is the color of the particles and how it's going to fit in your scene. Now our final grade is this dark kind of creepy look, almost nighttime look. The fogs right here look a little bit too white. They just don't fit in this scene. It should look a little bit more blue. So I'm going to go ahead and shut off this grade layer. And I'm going to come over here to the color under the particle sections in particular. And I'm just going to select a kind of bluish color. And I'm going to move this over just a hair. And that'll just add a real subtle blue tint to the fog. And that's probably going to get it to fit a little bit better in our scene once our grade is on. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Now this kind of depends on your scene, but to me right now this does look a little bit patchy. So we can tweak a couple of the settings over here to fill this in. One thing we can do over here is boost the size a bit. And in doing that, that filled in a lot of those holes, but we can also increase the size random. Right here, we got 28. We can actually, I don't know if you can see that difference when I turn it all the way down, turning it back up to 28. And the opacity, if this is still intense, you can actually do fractions right here. So even though I have it set at uh, 1, I can always come in here at 0.5. Let's see how it looks. Eh, it might even be... Let's do 0.7. And here's a couple more quick tips for you. If you don't like the way that these patches are appearing on your screen, but you're happy with all of the other settings, you can come up here to Random Seed and just change these values right here. And all it will do is rearrange the particles uh, on the screen where they're located and keep all of the other settings intact. Also under the physics setting, if you change physics time factor, this will affect the speed at which the particles are traveling as a layer, regardless of what the other uh, layers are doing in your comp. And lastly, don't forget that even though we track the camera to maintain particle location relative to the camera, you can still affect the way that the particles move with your physics setting down here under air. And you can affect things like wind. So even though this fog is overlaying the water of this lake, I could actually have a breeze coming from frame right, moving to frame left, and actually look like it's being blown across the surface of the water. All right, now that this is starting to look like fog, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my grade layer back on. Again, we were basically done with our main VFX principle when we finished our camera track. I teach filmmaking at an after-school program for a living, and one of the things I'm always telling my film students is when you're watching tutorials, pay more attention to the concepts being presented rather than the specific composite or specific settings. You probably won't wanna recreate something step by step. When you finish the tutorial, ask yourself what concepts were being taught here? How could I use those concepts in another way? For example, in this episode, we basically just ran a 3D camera track and added a 3D particle system to our comp. You may not ever need to add CGI fog to a scene, but maybe you have a scene in a desert and you want to add a sandstorm. Or maybe your movie is set in the south and you want to create a swamp scene. A 3D particle system could be used to create fireflies flying over the water. The possibilities are endless. So to recap what we covered today, we started off with a background plate which we ran a 3D camera track on, which by the way, in After Effects, you could do by simply right clicking on the layer and going to track camera. Once the 3D track was completed, we clicked on create camera, which created a virtual camera here in After Effects. And that allowed us to basically place any 3D element into our scene and have it behave as if it's part of the scene. 
And lastly, we added a 3D particle system. And by the way, these over here are particle systems that ship with After Effects. And you can use these, like I said, they're, they're pretty good. They just did not work for what we were trying to do tonight, which was to create fog. All right, folks, that about wraps it up. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this tutorial. If you'd like to see more tips like this, please subscribe to the Edit Bay. I'd really appreciate the support. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the box below. I'll see you next time.